Hello. Um, I want to give you an art demo showing you my two favorite collage papers that I made this week. So the two papers that I want to show you, one is Crayon Resist. Let me just make this a little bigger. There you go. <clears throat> so this is a the result of a Crayon Resist. I actually did this last week, and I'm just totally enamored with it. This is another example of it. And these are the ones that worked well. I also have a whole bunch that worked horribly. I did a lot of experimenting. This is one that I don't like at all. But because this was made on rice paper... If you turn it around, I don't know if you can see this, but it's gorgeous on the back. That's because rice paper actually absorbs what's happening on the front. So it made a beautiful design. Same thing with this one. I hate the front of it. This is the actual crayon resist. But if you turn it over, the texture is absolutely stunning. So let me show you the really simple way to do this. Um, the way you, you need to get a crayon that is, uh, this is a water-resistant crayon. This is, it's called a Brilliant B Crayon. There's other brands of this. Um, I've never used these, by the way, but it, when I read that you could do a, uh, a crayon resist, I pulled them out. Um, you want a flat edge if you can. This one has really nice flat edges. And you get some kind of stencil. This is my favorite stencil, actually. Um, something that, or you could use almost anything that has some kind of pattern to it. And you literally just create a relief, just like you were as a, <laughs> did as a kid with leaves and bark. And so you just create this, put the wax down on the paper. By the way, I'm doing this on wax paper. I've done this on now a number of different kinds of paper, and it does work on other papers, but I love the effect this has on when you turn it over because the rice paper does absorb the paint that you put on top, it absorbs it onto the bottom. And just fill out the, an entire page here. Okay, so you can still see this. Now you put down a rather watery, um, I'm put, this is a, if you can see this, is a golden high flow teal. You wanna do something in a contrasting color. So this is a, Hopefully this will work. By the way, again, they don't all work. So let's see. Okay, let me take my uh, stencil out of there. And you just do a wash. And this is working. Um, but I want to water this down as much as I can. because I want to still see. I don't want to cover up what I put underneath. Now, I could make it more interesting by putting a little bit of variation in the color, like the one that I showed you. This is actually the same stencil, but I used a couple different colors as I was painting. But you get the idea. This has, it's just a very beautiful, and it's on the back too. So I could actually paint something else on the back, to be honest, and it would actually show through. So that's a very easy one. Now, the one that I'm completely enamored with at the moment is this. Um, these were made um, with stencils that I made myself, and I'm going to show you how to make this stencil. So I made like three or four of these stencils while I was at the beach last week, and I made a couple um, really interesting designs. I, let me show one to you. Here, okay. So here is one that I actually made at the beach last week. I used this stencil that I made myself, and this is on rice paper. And basically all I did was I sponged through it. I can line this up so it, you can see, well, I can't, I can't line it up. Where, there it is. So this actually lines up with the, so I actually just sponge, I use a sponge and just sponged through it. And I got this really cool design. And I did use a couple different colors of sponging as I went. But then I was thinking this morning that wouldn't it be cool instead of just sponging through it to actually put a, uh, a roller just on the surface and press it down. So that is what I tried. So this one is just sponging through, and that's using actually um, this stencil full of circles that I made. Did the same thing with this. But then I took the back side of this, rolled yellow on it, and pressed it down, and I get a whole different 
design out of this. Same stencil. Same thing with this. This is another stencil I made. I use it as just a, you know, a, a, you know, putting a sponge on it. And then I also did it by rolling on the back of it and making an impression of it. I also squirted some water and got some different effects out of this. So I want to show you quickly how to make one of these. And then I will, I'll show you how, what the, the cool effect is. So um, you, one of the, the key parts of making a stencil like this is you want to do it on a surface like this. And I've learned this the hard way. Um, I actually uh, made a couple of these using, I have this plastic uh, surf, I have a plastic uh, covering on my table and I did it right on the plastic thinking this would be okay. It is not okay because um, I'm using a glue gun. And it's funny because I've had a glue gun probably, I don't know, for 20 years and I gave it away. And so when I realized I could actually make stencils using this, I went and bought another one. And luckily I like this one a lot more. So, you, by the way, one of the keys with the glue gun is you have to heat it up for like five minutes because the, the it has to be really, really hot for this to work. But I also I really like the board like this because I can actually use the lines on the board to help guide the design. I'm hoping that you can see this. Um, so I'm actually just following, making circles. And by the way, one of the keys here is you have to hit, uh, you have to make sure that each circle is t touching the other circle next to it. Otherwise it won't work. So now I'm not going to continue and make this entire thing, but I will pull it up in a little while and show you because like in three or four minutes, this will be dry and I'll have a little mini, a little mini um, stencil right here. So that one, that one has to touch, but does every, if every edge, if the edges don't touch to each other, this won't work. So I'm putting this down, taking this away. And let me show you a couple really cool ways to use this. So this is another stencil I made. I haven't used it yet. Now this is not rice paper. This is just copy paper, which actually works quite well as well. So I'm going to put some pretty fluid, um, hold on. Off to the side here, I'm putting fluid, um, uh, fluid uh, acrylic down, and I'm just mixing a little bit of water in it. And now I'm going to put my stencil down. Actually, I'm not going to. I'm going to use my sponge. I forgot. I want to use a sponge. So I'm going to wet the sponge first, and then I'm just going to lightly kind of sponge through. Hopefully, this will work. I think I'm going to add another color too. I'm going to add a magenta so you see a little bit of variation in the colors. Okay, I think this will work better. Oh, uh, yeah, I like that better. I just remembered that it doesn't work as well when you make it runny. You know, there's so many details here. Believe it or not, I actually did this this morning. I made like, I don't know, 20 of these, and then I forgot. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot how to do it. So I'm going to sponge all over this. I like using a couple different colors because it just looks more interesting when I pull it up as opposed to just all one solid yellow. Get a little more magenta in there. It might look a little weird right here because I was too runny. Eh, still looks good. And then the cool thing about this particular stencil is I can line up the uh, diamonds, sort of. They weren't perfect. Put some more on here. Okay, so, so far, I like what I got. I can't see even on my tiny phone. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Kim. Um, yeah, there's a lot of detail here, but already I think this is pretty gorgeous. I'm pretty in love with this. So let me show you another version of this. This time I'm going to use, this is rice paper. The last one was copy paper. So before I do anything, I'm actually going to roll, um, I'm going to roll this, um, I'm going to roll the uh, stencil with ink. Let's see if I can make this bigger for those of you who can't see as well. Um, so I'm going to roll the back of this with ink. 
I'm trying to get a little yellow in there as well because it makes it just a little more interesting when it comes out. So I'm putting some yellow down. Okay. Yeah. That'll add more interest to it. Okay. And now I'm going to put my paper down. I got to make sure I get the right side of the paper. With rice paper, you want it on the, the more textured side goes up. And then I'm just going to place this down and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to press it down harder. <laughs> okay, so so far so good, but this is not over. This is just the beginning. Just seeing all the side here, I'm going to add some more ink so I can get the whole thing down. Oops. Okay, I'm going to lift that up. And I can do the same thing, see if it works down here, so I can get the full page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now to make this a little more interesting, I'm going to score it with some water, because I'd like it to run a little bit, not be so um, exact. Oh, that's really nice now. <laughs> so it's beginning, if you see this, it's had a little bit of run to it. I'm going to do it a little more. Oh, yeah. Now I'm gonna let this dry for just a teeny bit because I want to, so I, I mean, this is beautiful the way it is, but if you flip it over and paint on the back side, it's even cooler. So I'm gonna put this aside just for a second and show you another one while this dries just momentarily. So let me show you this one. This is actually, an, I think it's a sketch paper, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so let me do. Actually, this is my favorite stencil. So let me put this one on here. And I am going to use the, um, I'm gonna use a green. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting it on too thin. Make it more, um, yeah, that will work better. Add a little bit of yellow to it, just make it interesting. Oh yeah, I like that even better. It just a solid color by itself doesn't excite me as much as having a little bit of variation on it. So add a little bit of that kind of magenta to it. Well, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> you never know how this is gonna work out, particularly when you're doing it live but I think I can still make this work. And the way I'm gonna make it work is I'm gonna take a piece of tissue paper and I'm just gonna blot it, see if I can improve this at all. At least I'll have a good piece of tissue paper, <laughs> if nothing else. So let's see, I'll pull this out. Yeah, the tissue paper looks fantastic and now the paper looks much better as well. So this tissue paper all by itself is actually something I would actually use in a collage. So I'll put that one Put that one aside. I'm trying to think what else I could do. I think I could put, um, oh, I know what I can do. Let me see if I can put this stencil and put the back of it, actually roll the back. You should have seen me this morning. I was like a mad scientist trying paper after paper after paper and seeing how they all fit together. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Sometimes I like them a lot afterwards. <laughs> so this may be into my being my favorite one, but it's a moment. And if all else fails, there's always water, right? Because that actually actually makes the whole thing. Actually, now I like it. It's amazing what happens. And then I take uh, another piece. I think I'm going to take the same uh, same tissue paper. No, that one's too pretty. Um, instead, this is a, a school book. Oh my gosh, everything is running now. So take the school book, see what happens. Okay, now the school book looks fantastic. That, not so much. I would actually, I'm actually gonna let this dry and I will put another layer on it later. Okay, another bad experiment, but let me show you one that is, let me pull this one back. So this one, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add another piece of, piece of paper under here only because I don't want the bottom side of this to totally be affected. So I am going to take this 
and put it upside down. This is very brave, by the way. And I'm going to add a diluted blue to it. This is just going, this is going on the back side of this, and we'll see what happens. And if all goes well, the blue will show through and almost act like a stained glass to what's underneath it, to what the original side was. Actually, I like it right there. And pull it up. Oh my gosh, I have a good design on the paper, which I'll probably use. Now that is just, oh my God, this I could use like repeatedly. So just think of all the different color combinations, but this is just the paper I did it on. This actually is excellent collage paper as well. So, any questions? I'm going to push this down so I can actually seal. Not bad. Just needs more layers. Exactly, Margaret. It does. The one that the one that didn't turn out needs a lot more layers. But it's totally um, a hit and miss. You know, you have to try like ten, and I get three that I actually like. Thank you, L. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you that you like it. Any questions? Looks like tie dye. Yeah, it does. And this one is probably going to be one of my favorite ones, just because I, I love the effect of putting the paint on the back. I just think it's the coolest thing. Anyways, thank you for hanging out with me. I am really very honored um, that you choose to be part of my journey, and I want to be part of yours as well. So, I will be back next Tuesday with another topic. If you have any ideas of what you would like to either me demo or talk about, feel free to. You can't see it. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm hoping other people could actually see it. Anyways, um, thank you for being here. I'm thrilled, honored, and I will see you back here next Tuesday Eastern Time for Tune In Tuesday. Bye, everyone. <laughs>